आपको तो लेट अस आई वॉन्ट यू टू शेयर योर प्रोग्रेस सो फार एंड वॉट आर द्लोकर्स विच वी हैव टू डिस्कस हेयर आर दूटोरियल सेशन एंड वॉट थिंग्स आर नीड्स दैट नीड्स योर आवर क्लास क्लैरिफिकेशन और डिस्कशन ऑन वाट वॉट सॉर्ट ऑफ द टास्क आर हार्ड फॉर यू एंड हाउ आर यू सॉल्विंग दैम anyone so let me start with bless no hi 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 hope everyone is doing okay is yes, okay on my part i'm just trying to understand uh, especially i think i installed the wrong profile for my dbt because when i run the because i'm i'm trying to use my sql and mm. when i run the pip install uh db uh dbt slash uh the hash dash my uh my sql it mm. comes uh a previous version which is i think 19.0 which is not the current one and mm. still with the same case it's not able to initialize the dbt but when i did i ran i ran it without the i, I ran the the official dbt without the mysql uh plugin it actually worked and probably that's what i'm building on but up to there then i'm still trying to figure out how to like populate my my database with the the you see that after you do initialize the dbt it comes with the my first model.sql and my second model.sql trying to say i can actually include my schema in sql into that case so that it can be able to upload data there Okay. Yeah. So, what, like, what's your plan to tackle the challenge? I'm, I'm trying to to go through a couple of documentations I've seen and try also to uh, reaching out to my peers and also to the tutors as well because I'm trying to understand it. I think after that, I think I should probably be okay. Okay. Who else can explain? Okay, let me move by my question and what are the deliverables for this week's challenge? I'm not going to like to have certain lecture for you, but let us discuss on what's going on and how we can solve the challenge. and what's the best strategy like just to figure it out what are there and which one is the right track who we think and just to go with you nothing more so just try to participate and let us know what's needed there and let us solve the problem together you are no no more trainee I want someone to tell me or to share their ideas here. Anyone? Okay, Baraka. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, like oh, from my side, uh, things. Uh, the data set that is given is very large, right? It's around two GB. So what I have done is I just take the last hundred thousand data, and uh, I just populate using uh, uh, SQL Alchemy to the database, to my SQL database. And then the next part that I was working was like uh, configuring the DBT, like creating. Uh, DBT and configuring that to work with MySQL, which is because it doesn't have the plugin for that. I have installed that plugin and uh, run the default model that it's going to be. 
And the thing that I'm confused is like I have installed Airflow, which is in another folder with another environment. And mm -hmm. I think we need to create a DAG script like to run the DBT. So yes. the way that I, I was trying to use is uh, Bash, uh, it's a way to run uh, the DBT from Bash using DAG scripts. So mm -hmm. like, uh, if I am outside the folder that's specified, the one mm -hmm. which is given, uh, mm -hmm. DBT will not run. So if I'm running it from the DAG script, will it run or will, it, will I have an, an auto? Like, uh, I have done some parts, but uh, for the for the run, it will run, but it will not populate or get uh, the DAG script. And the other thing is what I want to get answer is like the transformation that we are going to write is in DBTF. Yeah? Yes. So, like, are we going to load the data that we populated and transform it? Like, how are we going to transform it? Is somewhat that I'm not clear. Uh, if I get close to, it will be good. Thank you. So, for the first question, I think maybe if you specify your current working directory on the base DAG, file, uh, DAG folder, that will work. Okay, so, like, what about the environment? Like, should I activate? that one from like the, the data that environment is like, the dag environment is already the airflow environment yes no no it, they are different that's that's why uh, the the dbt environment is different from the airflow environment yeah i know that uh, when when you install airflow you have different environment there and you will yeah. update that so if you specify your working directory on the dag file uh, inside the dag files it will work you can able to import those files from there. Uh, for the second part, just the transformation is all about like the aggregate and maybe you have done some part like selecting the last 10,000 data or removing some columns that are, that are not needed or you can do either selecting based on the station ID just uh, writing select or yeah, yeah. Or it's all about the dbt is all about writing select statements so you can do that for the transformation part uh, can you have can we have something sample have you created the what you call it the schema uh, for the schema part that what i have done is uh, i specify the four columns the first four columns like date ID and uh, like when I populate the data, the, the, the and then the, the rest just I named it column one, column two, and something like that. But I didn't build the schema for DBT. Okay, so um, uh, in my thinking, I'm just using those columns there inside the uh what you call it the shared github link for for the data set and i'm just trying to select some of the for some of the data from there so that's uh, my solution for that and what will be the end result of this um project what do you think like uh for now i'm not that much clear but one thing that we are doing is we are building uh, like we populate we have a database that's populated and then uh, every time when the database is filled with another uh, data uh, we have a dbt that's uh, that's put over there and we, have, we will configure airflow to like to run daily or some some in some way like it might run in daily time in daily basis so in daily basis we will have a new uh, data that's published to the database, and we will take uh, DAG scripts that's written in for DBT to transform the ways that we want and deliver uh, the final result. I think this is a way to move forward. I, I don't know how we, we can integrate uh, MySQL to be populated with recent sensor data, but in my thinking, if we have uh, a data uh, like a database like that one we just populated with sample data 
So we think of like it will be populated every time with a new data. And then we have dbt and the flow, which is configured over there, which will run uh, daily basis or in like in hour to transform mm -hmm. the data and deliver the final data or the, the final data we rush for us. Okay. Uh, who else can explain me this data pipeline? Just wait me, brother. I will come back. Okay. Like the way to build data pipelines. Barakat have raised two important things, like either batch or real time. So, what do you think our this week's challenge is? Is, it, is that batch or uh, it's real time? Anyone? Anyone? So I think like while building this uh, data pipelines, we, we have two alternative options, either creating this data process like loading, extracting, processing the data in batch or in at real time. So when we say batch, we have certain frequency of time or a certain schedule and we can like uh, process that data. But when it comes to the real time, it will be different from that. And for the batch processing, we, you will use either Airflow or Chrome for, to schedule the tasks per as per uh, needed, like for if it's for day or if it is per hour or if it is per week, you can specify that on your Airflow and that will instantiate your uh, tags and batch, batch scripts and if it's it's a real time you will use either uh, Kafka or, or any other streaming uh, real time streaming tools and you will uh, build your data pipeline based on that that's the basic difference between this batch and real time so I think our this week challenge will fail under the batch proceed That was from my perspective. Uh, anyone who have different idea on this? So, oh, okay. Uh, I make it clear or complicated, like better. Like, like my my thinking, like uh, since we have we are getting uh, essential data, which is like it's I think in my opinion it's real time data. So like uh, I was thinking like if you could use real time for sync or. Uh, making real time is real time but in the, in the other way if we are using a flow and dbt together to transfer since we are making transformation i think we have like uh, what do we call in batch like we store the, the data directly to the database and extract that one and transform it and store uh, to the data warehouse yeah, that uh, that that way we are, that that scenario we are following now for this week challenge. Mm. So the end result uh, will be we have certain dashboard which can um, visualize our transformed data. So that will be performed through the redash tool. So our end result will be. The whole pipeline, which contains this uh, extract, load, and transform, plus visualize. So that was our um, high-level uh, deliverables for this week. So we have to uh, create a certain script which can extract data from the uh, the given text. Then we should have to load it to our data warehouse. Then 
from our data warehouse, we should have to transform using this dbt. Then we will implement this redash to visualize our findings or our transformation result. So why do we think we use this dbt? Is that important? Anyone can answer. So let me call randomly someone. Tibitenda? Yes, hello. Hello. Good um, morning. Uh, my internet connection has been poor. I did not hear why do we need dvd or why do you think it's useful for our case okay thank you so from what i've been reading we have the the dark runs using the airflow then we are able to have our data extracted from text and into csv okay mm -hmm. so as a format that we'll be understanding. Then the DBT is what is needed to create the different tasks uh, that we generate using the bash operators. So they'll be in form of SQL files. And so at DT, DBT, we shall be transforming our data. So the output will be a transformed data. Um, I don't know if I've explained properly. Okay, that's good. Uh, any other who can explain? Like why we need DBT? Sorry, um, who else can explain that why we need this DBT? Maybe you can explain. Hello. We can hear you. Okay, can you explain, W, why we need this DBT? Okay, Christian, go ahead. Uh, I think uh, DBT helps us to. Uh, to store our data as a data warehouse and to, to to create a model and to manage our data. Okay, that was a good uh, good explanation. So, any other who, can, who wants to add, 
like additional uh, class sites which we did by using this dbt let us share our knowledge and what we have on our hand and that will help others too Okay. Yeah, like in my opinion, uh, we use dbt like to do the transformation, like we have error data, and then uh, like uh, we, we want to transform either selecting some rows or some part of some 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 of the points that we need, and we will have uh a transform data that will be presented and dbt will help us on transforming that data and also testing our schemas and like uh, having an interface also like the ui would help us on like not getting the process going this yeah. So as they have stated that this activity have many advantages, which we get, which we get while we are using this DBT as a data for data pipeline building process. So we have this flexibility in our data model, like we can easily recreate data, in the one which called as a transformation, and we can able to uh, transform this data warehouse, uh, the data at the warehouse level into other tools, which makes things easy for us to do. And also, uh, it's uh, hard to test SQL because this this DBT have this both compile and execute characteristics, so it can compile our raw code and it will convert to SQL and it will execute that SQL towards our warehouse. So that will give us an opportunity to test the data quality. So this is the other plus side of the DBT which we have. And also it's very scalable because it uses this data warehouse and um, it have almost um, low learning curve which helps us to like to find mm, a knowledge which is within a limited time or we almost simple uh, what you call it mm, in short period of time you can extract uh, whatever needed from the, you, the existing data and also this dbt you can use uh, two flavors which is dbt cloud and dbt cli so that will make the other plus side for it so you can use either the cloud or the local cli to, to run your airflow to trigger events there so these are some of the advantages uh, which we get while you are using this dbt and also those uh, uh, searchable data catalog and lineage is the other advantage which helps us to find to find and understand the re relevant data set for our uh, business objective so that means this data catalog will give us a, a, to uh, an opportunity to discover the data and to get the description and to know about the data organization as well in this in this specific project we are almost suffering from this thing because we don't have this data catalog so we don't know how the data is organized so 
if you implement uh, this dbt for your data pipeline you will get that advantage too so that will be the other plus side for using dbt in your um, data pipeline proce uh, building process so anything which you want to add on this or any different thing which you get while you are reading about this dbt and which can help us to enhance our experience on dbt anyone okay uh, if not let us go to this um, where to implement this dbt and when to implement so we have two flavors for dbt and data pipeline building the one is etl and the other one is elt so what's the difference between etl and elt or extract transform load process and uh, extract load transform process I'm bringing these points just to discuss with you. So it's better if we participate and discuss about things. Let's make it in, in, interactive. Yes. <laughs> can I ask a question? Okay, you can. Yes, uh, I already installed DBT and uh, I've run also my, my data. I create also a database locally, but uh, when I try just to open it in you no know, click, it's not working. I don't know why. What's not working? Sorry. What do you say? Yeah. I didn't get your question. Can you? Oh. Okay. I said maybe I, I will show my screen. I, I said that I, I already installed DBT and I create all, already my first database locally. But uh, on the cloud, on slow, Snowflake, yes. On the cloud on Snowflake, that dot upload. Are you using MySQL uh, or Snowflake? Uh, I'm using Snowflake. For this particular project, we are rec we're recommending you to use this MySQL. Okay. Um, however, can you jump? Or... No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I was just going to say, we the, the data warehouse um, technology that we are um, advocating for you to use this week is either MySQL or SQLite. Uh, the major reason why we are saying this is because um, not not everybody has um, free access to uh, Snowflake. And then the next week's challenge that you are going to be working on builds on this week's challenge, and uh, it's going to be about uh, migrating uh, tech stack. And we want to start from the most simplest text start, which includes uh, MySQL and uh, MySQLite. So next week, you might get a chance to play with either the, the cloud-based um, um, data warehouses like Redshift, Snowflake, GCP, BigQuery, and the rest of that. So this week, the focus is just MySQL and then, um, or SQLite. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, um, on your way, Awoker, can you share us your uh, experience on Ten Academy data with structure and schema? Okay. 
Yeah, um, I've been trying to look for the well, the schema that we that was generated more we created. Uh, so it's just it's just a, a simple um, story behind it. The why we uh, the, one of the focus of this week's uh, project is to um, explain or be able to deal with uh, data modeling as well as building uh, a <coughs> stack from from local um, fr from the local um, machine like your own <coughs> machine and why. While um, I was working on the uh, Ten Academy database, that's the same way it started. And um, initially, um, we used the MySQL um, uh, workbench, which um, allows us to um, create tables easily. And uh, uh, we the, the major uh, thing there is we needed to understand why we need a database and the kind of information that we want to store in the database and this will then inform the schema on how you are going to design the schema and what you need to like put in place to make the um, schema work so you, we we started from um collecting simple um, data from batch one two um, three and then um, identifying the use cases for each of these uh, um, data and creating a schema around that. So we we, we basically we we, we conform with the, the design process as well as uh, making sure that it meets some of the um, enterprise um, database uh, design, which is like um, we we ensure we divide um, each information into. Um, Subject uh, based information. This sounds, I mean, this serves as the tables that we create such that we don't keep um, redundant uh, data, data that we would use. Uh, we, we also provide um, access to the information in, such, in the sense that we created a, a logical as well as physical schema. The logical schema is responsible for how each uh, table would relate to one another in the database how a trainee table would connect to say um, slack table or rocket chat table or gmate table so we have like a primary key we have a foreign key we have uh, in, in some cases we can have two foreign keys depending on the connection that we uh, created in the uh, in the tables uh, we, we also ensure that the data is um, accurate and uh, it actually speaks uh, um, uh, accuracy in sense that how we are getting the data, we are validating it, and then we are checking since it's it's, it's not uh, like a lot of data. We're not playing with gigabytes of data. It's just like uh, megabytes. I think the highest we worked on was like in three fifty four fifty uh, megabytes, and then we were able to like store all of these things. I would have loved to show you the schema. It's a little bit very dense because we have up to. Uh, 33 up to 35 different um, tables in the uh, database and we needed to create uh, connections for um, all of these things and then we also you should also include um, uh, stages at which you can do data processing as well as reporting it on the uh, database that you are um, creating um, so we we started from the mysql workbench and then we created the schema from there before we then move on to the cloud um, based um, rds um, aws rds that's the um, aws relational database um, um, system and we were using um, sql and mysql 8.0 i think 8.0 point something uh the reason the reason is because we, we can either use um Postgres, which is another thing that we were considering that at that point, like different database technologies that we could use, but we think like starting small and the advantage that Postgres has over MySQL is not very much. The, the only thing I see there is that in Postgres, you can write straight Python codes that will just transform um, data directly, but then that's why we have um, SQL to do uh, something like that. and. That was why we stick with um, MySQL. So, I mean, and MySQL is kind of industrial base. I like it. They require it a lot as well. And that will sharpen up your um, SQL um, 
skills um, as well. Um, in the design process, uh, we determine the process of the database. We also uh, organize the information that we need. And then we, in the logical of schema design, we, do, we specify different primary keys for different tables and how they would relate. Each table should have a primary key. You would have noticed in all of the schemas that you have created for this project, if you have like two different tables in your database, you notice that you should have a primary key that uniquely identify each row. And then if there's going to be a relationship between this table and this table, that means the next table would have, uh, would have a foreign key, which is a primary key in the um, primary table. You have uh, something like uh, that. Um, we also set up a uh, table relationship after determining the uh, primary keys. And then that would then restructure how you define and how you have defined the schema, as well as what needs to connect to where before you can actually get some data. So, for instance, if you want to get uh, the score of a particular um, trainee, you don't have to store the name of that trainee in the score table. You only need to store the ID of the trainee in the score table. So, the ID of the trainee in the score table would be. Uh, primary score training ID would be a foreign key on the score table, while the score ID would be the primary key of the score table. So the connection between training and the score table would be the training ID. And then you can easily get um, score inform or grade information for any uh, training when you create the uh, connection. And one thing that was um, important while designing the um, data um, basis uh, um, normalization. This we, we we struggle with it a lot, and uh, uh, because we, we needed to like there are like three different uh, normalization um, schema that we must follow. We have the one NF, uh, which is the one normal form. We have two normal form and three normal form. Um, one normal form says that you can only have um, one foreign key in one table. Uh, two normal forms is that you can connect uh, more than, uh, I think, two tables in a particular database, and three normal form also has its own um, state, but I can't um, remember what it stands for now. But we needed to apply uh, normalization for our uh, table. And then in the table as well, you can, you can have uh, while defining the, uh, the relationship, you can have one to many relationship, you can have many to one relationship, you can also have one to one um, relationship. All of this information is not what you sit down and then you get, you have to talk to the business owner. So here we, there was like an iteration between myself and uh, Aaron asking, what do we need? Why do we need this? How would this relate to that? You don't have to be like the expert of it because all you are designing is the schema. The business use case for the database it needs to come from the actual user of the database. And then that's why you need to like ask a lot of questions and then come back and redesign the schema, go back again, and then you know you propose different column names for these tables. They accept, they reject, you have to come back. So it's like a back and forth, back and forth thing before you actually uh, get it done. And that that's majorly because one, it's a, it's a, this is like the first database that we're going to like be creating. So the, the information that we have are scattered everywhere and then we need to like either create an API to get the data or write um, some um, cron jobs that will get data from somewhere, somehow. Then I was not uh, familiar with um, use of VFLOW and the rest of that. So just basically cron job, getting data and storing somewhere and transforming it when need be. Uh, before actually uh, storing it. So creating the relationship is one thing that, you know, you need to like, do a back and forth thing for. Um, so having like, for, for instance, in a table where you have the training table, you have um, gmx table, you have uh, grades table, and uh, one more thing, um, a normal table, right? Uh, for you to create a one-to-many relationship, you would imagine, you have the training table, which is like the information about the trainees, and then the grade table is like grade information about the trainees, and the GMIS table is the information, uh, is the table that houses the uh, trainees, uh, GMIS uh, attendance, and the rest of that. For you to like create a connection, you don't want to like, 
you don't want to uh, repeat in, in uh, data in the uh, you don't want to keep repeating data in different tables so you just need to create a relationship so that's one of the um, advantages of uh, creating uh, a relationship so you say the trainees table will have the one and the uh, genies and the rest of the other tables will have the many so that's like a one to many uh, kind of uh, relationship we also have the many to many relationship um, I can't think of one. I don't think we had a case of many to many relationship while creating it. But we have a lot of cases for uh, one to one uh, uh, relationship in the um, database. And then when you define all of these things, and then once the schema is accepted, you can then run the SQL code that will generate the tables as well as, you know, to create the actual um, table in the database before you can then start uh, populating data into the database. This is not a one-week thing or two-week thing. This is like an iterative thing when it's available and when we get the data and all of that before we could actually create the uh, tables and the database that we are currently using uh, today and serving its uh, purpose. It's not running locally, it's running on AWS, which means like they are giving us the SLE, they are giving us the security, they are giving us the scalability. So for instance, if we go to like 5 million trainers, we are good. Um, and a lot of other things that um, cloud um, solution offers, right? Uh, so that's like this, the simple story behind um, creating a data models and then database for um, the case study uh, 10 Academy. I'm, I'm not sure if it's um, abstract or if you get one or two things, but then that should like inform the data engineers in the house of uh, how to, um, you know, go about creating like, tables and the rest of that. I would also, um, Malik, can I keep going? Mm -hmm. I said, can I keep going? I was um, going to show what yes, a you data. Can. Okay, okay. So in today's. Uh, <coughs> In today's um, submission, we we have asked you to submit a report, um, your GitHub code, and uh, a data lineage graph, uh, which you generate from um, DBT. There has been a lot of questions as to how to connect data wells to DBT. Some of you have been able to do it. If you are still struggling with it, now would be the best time to raise your question so that we can tackle that. Because if you don't create the connection between your data wells and the um, DBT, then you'll not be able to get the um, data graph that you need. Um, I'm just going to show, I'm not sure if I can still share my screen, I can stop it. I'm going to show how to, uh, um, unfortunately I can't, I can't share my screen, but there is, there is like- Give me a minute, let me. Okay. There, when, when you create um, when you create the docs, because we are going to, I mean, in the final submission, you are going to submit your data documentation, which is one of the advantages or one of the usefulness of the DBT. It actually creates it creates a um, a data documentation for you, where any stakeholders or business users can easily go and understand the different tables that you have in your data wells and the different columns that are there and how they relate to one another, the description, the kind of test that you are running on them. And there you will be able to create um, a, 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 a lineage graph, right? You'll be able to create a lineage graph. Yeah, uh, Malik, can you please continue while I share you the screenshot for the lineage graph? Hello? I said go ahead, like explain the ETL and in ELT that you wanted to explain. I would, I would share the discussion to the data lineage for you and they can say from your Okay, basically we have uh, two things here. The first thing is this, um, ATL process or the traditional process which we are using for data science. The first thing is you, you will extract data from there and the data can be either 
in different format either structured or non structured so for the structured format we have this uh, uh, the old relational database uh, or data which are form, uh, formulated on as a table or we have those NoSQL for the cloud ones and also we have unstructured data set like uh, uh, JSON file or uh, uh, JSON file or CSV files like semi-structured and also there are also texts uh, um, audio files are there which can be categorized under the unstructured file, uh, file type so we have this different uh, data out there so we need to extract them and we have to join those data into our uh, data pipeline so the extraction process will be going through while you are reading these things you will then the extraction process then in the traditional ETL process you will transform that into the commonly understandable way like for example if you are using uh, if you we want to use this JSON file and a relational database at the same time you should have to uh, load both of them uh, the, the, what you call it extract both of them then transform in the way which is suitable for you uh, like merging the data or doing certain and uh, transformation <coughs> there then that will be done at the staging area the next step will be you will load that uh, transformed and curated data to the data warehouse and that will be a, a, a final storage for you uh, to store your data then that is uh, the final data set which is uh, used to uh, analyze and extract insights from the given data set by combining multiple data uh, sources so this is the overall uh, process of the traditional uh, ETL process but while we are coming to this uh, big data or the, the the new scenario which comes like you are not able to process uh, those data sets coming from different uh, servers or different requests so you should have to manage those things so in order to use that or in order to like in order to handle the uh, big nature of your data you should have to have certain uh, thing uh, like you are not able to transform that directly into your local computer or any server so you should have to first uh, load, uh, extract the data and then load that data into a warehouse and that warehouse will be responsible to transform those data into meaningful insights while we are, you are using the this uh, ALT process, the only thing you will explain the loading and the extraction step uh, ahead. So that will help you uh, to to get more flexible uh, data pipeline, plus uh, to load uh, data faster, and also you are able to maintain. Uh, continuously so which is uh, which makes it suitable for you the ETL uh, ELT part because those things uh, which is like this maintenance flexibility and the uh, like the fast data processing step which we get by deploying this uh, ELT pipeline we didn't get this advantage on ETL so we should have to migrate uh, to the ELT part while dealing with the big data. So this ETL can have more and more advantage than the, the, the previous one. So apart from this uh, flexibility, it's fast. And also you can maintain easily and you will have less cost for this maintenance and mind your uh, mind that this maintenance you have a big impact on your system because while you are at the industry level coding or and at the industry level working uh, 
down times are not tolerable so if your data pipeline is easily maintainable that is that is the preferable one and also it's highly scalable and well the amount of the data increase it it, it, it will increase the data in, uh, the alt part also process or it can easily adapt to the new the new coming data instance so that makes it preferable for the big data this etl part and also uh, there, there are some disadvantages like security stuff and those security protocols are not properly uh, linked with this etl but from the company perspectives which runs this big data uh, uh, definitely alt uh, is the preferable one um, that's all i have for um, this etl part and yeah let us discuss if you have anything So what the in the deliverables uh, like from what we discussed and from what you read, what will be the in deliverable for this week's challenge? Let us uh, clear it out. Hi baby. Hi baby. Hi baby. Can you show us how you get this the DPT image graph? Okay, the lineage graph just I have uh, like taken a photo for that. I'm, I'm not able to open it now because my, my system get died if I open. It's easy to generate um, yours if you want to like generate. <laughs> your um, lineage graph you have to generate the documentation first like what after writing some models in your um, dbt you would then you would run it so you do dbt run so you run that and then that will build into your data wells you can verify that by looking through your data wells when you do that and it's there you can run um, dbt docs generate that will generate the uh, documentation that includes all of the descriptions that you've added to each of the schemas in your uh, uh, in your dbt uh, project so for instance if you have created like a staging part and then you've created like a dev and development part and you've created a production part and you've added um, a, a schema.yml um, file there it's not composed with a schema, but it's a YML file, which would specifically describe what that model entails in terms of what it is doing, the kind of transformation it's storing, and how it's processing it. Probably it's writing it as a view or as a table. When, when, when you do that and you run dbt docs um, generate, it's going to generate the document. And when you do dbt and um, docs serve, it's going to serve that, uh, it's going to like create a local um, server on your machine, which would which will go live on the local host port 8080. And when you go to that particular um, that particular bit, you should be able to then see how, I mean, you should be able to then um, 
say uh, um, uh, a button that would show you this graph. So we need you to attach this, this graph to your submissions today. That's what we need. That would show us that you've been able to create your connect. You've been able to create a data warehouse. You've created a connection to the data warehouse via DBT. You've written some models. It could be very very complicated. This was just in a rush. So it would be as complicated as, as possible. And then, yeah, you just send us the screenshots to do this. Any other questions? Are we all clear? Last question, maybe. Or maybe I can uh, ask uh, the difference between a view and then a table. Are there any difference? Okay, Christian, can you, can you explain the difference, please? <laughs> Uh, if you if you display, I think, uh, if I understand very well, if you display uh, what can I say? Uh, how we tap it? I think it's very good. Give me just a little. Yeah. How we tap it in the chat box? Give me just okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, one percent types is the uh, answer. Anybody wants to admit that? Tell us the difference. Okay. Do you know what it's like? Uh, Okay, if you display the table. Uh, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, anybody wants to add to that or disagrees with uh, Christian? If nobody is saying anything, that means you agree that a view would display a table. Right, right. Uh, okay. Uh, thank, you, thank you, Christian. I, I think that you are partly right and uh, partly wrong. I, I think the, the part where you're right is like a table will have columns and rows as well, but view also has columns and rows depending on um, you know we create views from uh, tables, right? We just say. Um, create view from then we write select all that that and then that creates the view for us. Uh, the major difference there is that uh, once we create a view, it's not being um, updated. Like we can't update a view like directly. So that like the view is just uh, a snapshot of the table, and if we have like additional data set or we have like a delete operation on our, on our table, then the information in the table can change while it won't like uh, I, um, change for the view, right? That's like uh, the uh, only difference that the view has to a table. Okay, but then thank you for the uh, answers. Okay, um, anybody struggling to connect uh, probably with the profile or YAML file to then connect it to uh, to DBT? Uh, Mazaria, have you been able to fix the bug that you talked about before then? Um, no, I haven't been able to fix it yet. Uh, I'm not sure if it's. Um, 
Uh, can I share my screen? Please do. Uh, so this is the error I'm getting. I'm not sure if it's from the port. I haven't been able to see um, to properly figure out which port it's running running one, but um, this is the information that I tried to use to connect. I think if it's MySQL, I think it's 3306. Um, okay, uh, so uh, 3306, I, I, I did try that, but um, so the other ones are correct. An Academy Warehouse Challenge. Um, so I think it, it fails, yeah. And it brings the same error. It can't connect. Okay. Um, I think this is particular. I know. So I'm not sure. Um, just give me a few minutes after the um, tutorial, then I'll do some research. And if I get anything, I'll just ping you. No, okay. I'm not. I'm not sure if like fix it now. Because once we like set the port and local host, it should just uh, work. Did you try like restarting your MySQL server? Maybe. Mm, yeah, I did uh, a lot of times. Uh, yeah. It didn't work. Yeah, I will do some research and get back to it. Any other questions? Okay, so we'll be looking forward to your amazing uh, submissions. Uh, all right, Christian? Yes, uh, I, I would like to ask you one question. Um, uh, in the past, I, I worked with MySQL, but in common line, and I give some, uh, I create, uh, I give some access to administrator, but I don't know, currently today, when I'm trying to work in a digital of workbench, all the code I'm trying to, to work is not working. Do you know why? What, what are the specific errors that you get? Uh, let me read it for you. Uh, he's saying that, <laughs> I think it's different, it's, but the most common is use the reference function to select from. I don't know why. I'm trying just to create another database using my script workbench, but it's not working. Uh, can you share your screen so that we know? Maybe someone on the phone might be able to help. Okay. And if anybody has like faced the kind of uh, um, issue that Azaria has and he has managed or she has managed to fix it, um, please get in touch with uh, Azaria or just raise your hand and Azaria can get in touch with you. Right? I already, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see it. Okay. I, I already created a physical database called Demo TV. Look at it on okay. my desk code here. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know why, when I try just to, to run this code, it's not working. This is just get up. Um, yeah. did, you, did you create the table with, I mean, sorry, the database with my SQL workbench? No, no, no. Okay. no. Can, you, can you click on the schema parts of the MySQL workbench and let us see if the I mean, the database is there? Okay. Can you refresh? Just see if you look up. It's not there. Okay. But normally, I think this problem should work, right? Because I use create. Are you, no. But you are creating a view here. Not the database. Thank you. All right. And I think if you are creating a database, like you just give it a name, like you can call it demo db public, 
but don't put the dot my second dpt model there just like create the database first and then you can create schemas in it when you are like ready to create it okay yes yes you uh yeah i was having uh, trouble inserting the data using airflow right it works uh when i run the scripts without the dag without the dag part but then when i use dag it doesn't work okay um so which part is failing did you like create different um, tasks in the dag yes i have and it doesn't show any kind of failure on the UI, it says it it was successful, but it hasn't inserted not, not the rules when I checked the database. Maybe it's not executing the, uh, the are you using a Python script or you are using a yeah. SQL? Which one are you? I'm using the Python script. Yeah, can you share your screen so we see it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, can you see? Yeah, yeah, I can see. So I was using this uh, script to insert the data, and it was working fine. I was accepting the yeah parameters and trying to pass that through the DAG script. Um, are, you, are you sure like uh, the parameters that you are accepting through the um, probably OPKWARG uh, argument, are you sure it's actually parsing the data? Mm -hmm. Like, okay, it's, um, it's printing it out. Okay. Let's just look at this. You mean you mean from here? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah, it could be that the the data is not being passed. Okay. okay. So well, in uh, with with here, it passes the data with uh, SCOM, as you might be aware, and um, mm -hmm. we there's like a limitation of the data size that it can parse uh, two kilobytes with MySQL. So that could be okay. one of the reasons. So I'm I'm, I'm assuming. Where, where are you getting the DF from? You are reading the DF, like say, uh, PD dot three CSV, and then you pass in the DF, yes? I was just trying on some sample data I created myself. Okay, then I would assume that the data size is not much. And then so just take try to print those uh, DF values there before, um, like before inserting them into database. Can you try okay. that? So, like, yeah, I can try uh, that. You are accepting just to confirm that you are getting the data. Mm -hmm. If you get that data, it's, it's it have to insert that into your uh, database. Okay, so there, it's not a connection problem. It's just uh, that I'm not passing it the right way. Yeah, I mean, if the DAG runs successfully. <laughs> Then it's not a connection code. Right. Yeah, it says here that it was successful. Can you check the log? Uh, check the log for the um, operator that was inserted. 
Okay, I can also do that. Well, can you do it now? So we just see. Yeah, sure. Just takes a while. My PC is kind of slow. Yeah, I understand. There's like a lot of tabs open. So. <laughs> Yeah, and now I'm not seeing the Doug that I was. I, th I think you have selected only examples. Can you cancel uh, the no. filter? Is it an example? Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, uh, so we're... Go, go, go to the graph view. Oh. And uh, you have one. Okay, um, click on it and then let's see the log. I said I saw two uh, Python operators. Nothing? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> then nothing is happening. We, we, it's probably not getting the data. It's running on a, on empty thing and it's not processing anything and that's why. Can you click on play just like with you guys now and see if anything will change? Yeah. So I think I think the problem with the way you have um, uh, you have created the DAG. Right, like okay. it's not, it's most likely not processing anything. You said you run it um, on your, with Python, and then it, it inserts like the data into the DB, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you should follow um, ETL process for your DAG as well. So you create, you create a simple DAG that uses probably four different, um, what's it called? Four different tasks, so the first task could be uh, you create the database, for instance. Um, second mm -hmm. tag would be probably it's create a table in the database. Um, third task would be you load in the data that you want to like put into your database. So you do probably that would be read this uh, read CSV. And then the fourth tag would be inserting into the database and you know just follow the um, ETL uh, process or extract the data somewhere and then load it via um, the airflow. So you create different tasks to undo um, each level. You know, you have to like have your database ready, have the table set, uh, make sure you are using that uh, database, and then uh, then load the data to, that you want to insert into the table, and then run the insert. So right now you're only inserting, but we don't know where the data is coming from and all of that. So you should like uh, split all of this things into um, tasks, and then that will make it more fun and uh, easy to relate to it. Okay. okay. Try these things out and then uh, let us know if it's not uh, working. Yes, and then we'll be able to help. Yes, Jack and Okay. Thank you. Hi, uh, Abu Bakar. I have a, a question. Let's go ahead. I'm trying to I'm trying to insert uh, data into my my table into a specific table, uh, specific columns, and uh, I have the first. Uh, 
the first component as the ID and it's auto incrementing. But uh, if I, if I, let me just share my screen. If I try and insert the first ID as uh, as one, it, it says that I have, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Okay. So uh, I was trying to, to get 